What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great. I hope you are too. It's me again, Kiki B, and welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. We have got a camp building tutorial for you today that is going to knock your socks off, so if you haven't got any socks, you better put some on now. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to build this gorgeous pre-war ranch style house here, um, including a real freaking basement, and look at the inner corners on those roofs. The whole thing, it's Ugh, oh, chef's kiss. It's glorious. I love this camp. I cannot wait to dive into it with you. But before we do, just make sure that you're subscribed. You know how it goes. And click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future epic camp builds. Because we both know you don't want that. Alright, so I've already thrown down my foundation here. I've got a 6x2 base for the main part of the house and then a little two by one sticky outy bit on the front. I don't know, does that have a name? I'm not an architect. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna throw up my walls now. And I always build with doorway walls because it's just easier. Um, in case you didn't know, if you have a doorway wall, you can just like this, uh, remove the foundations from underneath them. So it just makes it a lot easier while you're building. Anyway, I'm gonna stick this foundation here in this corner because this is what's gonna get us down into our basement in a minute. And in order to get down into the basement, we need a staircase. I like the wide vault staircase without the railings because it's the easiest one to put stuff on. And then we're gonna take a rug. And for me personally, my preference is for the personal terminal uh, to use as an object to get into the basement. If you've ever seen any camps that are built under the world, you may be seeing them with instruments or uh, stools or whatever. A lot of people use the terminal as well. I like it personally because it's the quickest one to get in and out of when you just want to get down the stairs. Anyway, so now we're going to take that, pick it up by the rug and place it. And uh, as you can see, this is still a little too high. So unfortunately what you have to do is store the staircase and then pull everything out and do it again and get it a little bit lower down in there. Right about here, eh, almost got it. Right there, come on. Okay, right there, looks good. Um, you want it just so that the keyboard is just a little bit above the ground. And now we are underneath the world. Um, obviously we don't have much with just, you know, a staircase going down into open space unless you really want to fall down and kill yourself which is fun sometimes, but not what we're aiming for here. So grab some floors, start pulling them towards you and attaching them to the stairs so that you've actually got some place to stand. Now we want to keep this, um, should be obvious, but we want to keep this the size of the footprint of the actual house. Um, if it's sticking out farther than the size of the house, then you're going to have walls sticking up through the ground and it's going to look really weird. And we're not going for really weird here, we're going for epic. Um, so let's keep it epic. Now putting walls underneath stairs like that um, can be a little squirrely. And just go ahead and make life easier on yourself. Throw any old wallpaper up on all your walls right off the bat and then you don't have to worry about that later. Okay, so now we need to put um, a floor up above us that's actually gonna be like the ground floor of the house and it will be the ceiling of the basement. So in order to do that, we've gotta have it supported, of course. Uh, so we need stairs coming up from below to support that. And it's gonna give us some trouble putting this floor here until we remove one of the walls, which I'm about to do. So yeah, as you can see, if you've got a staircase and you've got walls above and below it, it really doesn't want to put a floor in front of the stairs. It's, it's completely arbitrary and stupid. But if you take away one of these walls, preferably the lower one, I think it's still weird with the top one, then you can place the floor and you're good to go. 
So we're just going to go ahead and finish out the floor for the rest of the house. Except apparently the little front bit, which I skipped for absolutely no reason that I can think of. And I'm going to go down here and change all the walls into actual walls. So that we're not staring out at the underside of the world. As you can see there, it would not let me put a full-size wall. And when it comes to putting walls underneath stairs like that, you may need to put two half walls. Now you can see we're running into the problem of needing an exit. If you just have a staircase like this and you've got stuff on it and you've got floors around it, you're going to have a really hard time jumping back up through. So for now I'm going to open up this wall and I'm going to make an exit. Later I'm going to fix this so that my stairs down are my entrance and my exit, which is a much more elegant solution, I'm sure you'll agree. But for now, let's make a doorway. Let's stick some stairs on it and find out that we cannot actually walk up through them because apparently we're too tall for this doorway. So we're going to take that off and put down a half floor and go ahead and stick those stairs back there. And now we've got an exit. You've always got to jump that last little bit. It won't let you just walk all the way up through the ground for whatever reason. Also, um, yes, you can just jump up from below. If you have marsupial, you can just jump up through if there's a space, which there wasn't in our case. But anyway, you can do that. But it's not nice to rely on that because not everyone visiting your camp is going to have marsupial and you don't want people to get stuck under the world and have to fast travel out or jump off the edge and die. Uh, anyway, now I'm just changing some walls around and adding the slanted walls on the ends and we're going to start putting in the roofs. Yeah, there's really not much to say about this. I'm just putting in the roofs. Now, obviously, because we've got that overlap to make the inner corner there, um, we are going to need to destroy a couple of roof pieces before we can put the second set in there that intersects and creates that nice little mitered inner corner that looks so lovely. So I like these tables for the flamethrower. They're just a really good height uh, for stacking stuff up on. And they're also the surface of the table is large enough that you can fit like a small generator and a flamethrower on there if you're doing that, which is super convenient. Anyway, you have to take it outside to set the flamethrower on because the roofs are annoying. Uh, but once we bring it back in, you can actually, you don't have to hook it up to power if you don't want to. You can just exit build mode, click the trigger button on the flamethrower trap and it will turn it on. We need to destroy those two roofs, and the game is not going to let us attach other roofs to the two pieces on the little front bit. Stuff, things, bits. Um, anyway, it's not going to let us just snap them onto those two front roof pieces so we're actually gonna have to put down a wall if I can find a wall so hard that we can then coax a roof onto it's a little bit messy uh, this piece is even more fun come on you can do it lucky you don't have to watch this in like real-time speed that was torture Okay, so now we can take the walls away because these are supported by the, the front parts and the front walls. And we get to do more flamethrowering, yay! Now, if I had been a little bit more sensible here, I would have just hooked a generator up to this, but I didn't, not sure why. So I have to keep going in and out of build mode and clicking the trigger button and then repairing it and then doing another thing. It's a pain in the butt, but the point is, we got a flamethrower, all these roofs, and with the height that I have the flamethrower trap at, it's also going to destroy the walls every time. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying and it wastes a little bit of extra wood, but who really cares in the end? Ugh, 
We're almost there, come on. Also, I just love the satisfying crash that you get when you flamethrower stuff and it just like collapses into bits on the ground. It's fun. All right, this needs to be up a little bit higher to do this roof piece, so I'm gonna stick it on top of a little stash box. And there we go, done. We've destroyed all our roofs and most of our walls in the process. Now we're gonna do the next thing because obviously the little crossed over intersected bit looks kinda ugly if we had to look at that in our actual house and we don't want to. So we're gonna put in a ceiling by putting in a flat roof. Um, I used the log cabin roofs here at first and later I changed them to the Brotherhood flat roofs. Doesn't really matter which ones you pick, which ones you have, which ones you like, except the glass ones would look really dumb there. So, you know, don't go with those, but anything else is fine. And we're gonna do a fun little trick here and actually put all our wiring inside the roof so we don't have to see it on the outside. And because conduits have about a two space, like two wall or floor space radius, like sphere around them that they power, uh, this will actually reach the lights down in the basement as well as the lights uh, all through the house. Anyway, the point is that these up here, uh, they have enough range to cover everything down below as well. Now, for now, I'm throwing in some foundations here because uh, I do want to create a little porch on the front. Later, I will go ahead and change the um, floors underneath the sticky outy front bit, for lack of a better technical term, uh, so that I can put a little extension on the basement and stick an extra room out there. That's where the bathroom is going to end up being. But for now, this works. Anyway, just changing some walls around to fit my preferences. Um, this isn't anything really interesting or specific or necessary or whatever is whatever you like you know and if you don't have the contemporary walls that i'm using here the brick walls would look really great um yeah you could do lots of things so just play around with it and you know see what suits you Um, anyway, so yeah, I've double walled most of that stuff, and now I want to go ahead and never mind that. Now I want to go ahead and just move this over a little bit so that I can actually get up and down on these stairs, like I talked about earlier. My original plan was actually to put a little bathroom there in that little room that I just made, but we're gonna scrap that idea later. So yeah, I'm just fiddling around with this, I'm trying to get it uh, in the right spot. So that it's out of the way. If I knew how to jump. Um, yeah, so you can get up and down that way. It makes it a lot easier. And yes, I'm very picky. And often end up repeating myself a lot and doing the same things over and over again. But there we go. I think we're done. I think we're going to stick with that. We can get up and down. Good. Finished. Also later I am going to end up moving the stairs to the other end of that little hallway, but that's a whole other thing and not really that important. Some more fiddling around with walls, wallpapering. This room down here is going to be the bedroom. And I'm very indecisive about what I actually want to do with this space. 
I'm going to change it like five more times before I uh, finally settle on something. Now I'm just going to snap these floors here so that I can bring them around. Because I can't snap them to the, the floating, like the upper floor pieces that are here. So I need to snap them to a foundation so that I can get them lined up right. And I'm going to use this to create a little patio uh, in the backyard. Anyway, that's the basics of the building. That should show you everything you need to know to actually recreate a structure like this on your own. And here is the finished product. I mean, it's got to have a white picket fence. And look, I parked my golf cart out front. So yeah, this little patio area out front that I came up with. You've got a shelter. You've got, you know, a stash and scrap box, a vending machine where it's nice and easy to see. A little bit of landscaping and plants and stuff. And if you come in here, you've got this hallway, which I quite like. I really like the colors in here with the yellow and blue and white. It's great. In here, the bedroom. And throughout the whole house, you can tell, obviously, that I'm going for a very, like, you know, clean, mid-century kind of theme. Um, this is not a scrappy, wastelandy style build. This is very much a, you know, a pre-war build. And here's a tip for you as well. If you're looking to up your decorating game and having a hard time making a room look put together, I guess, um, try to stick with a very limited and very specific color palette. Like in the bedroom, we've got a lot of blue and some brown. In the hallway, there's the blue, white, and yellow. In here, we've got red and brown and a few little pops of green. And it's totally fine to put, you know, a few pops of other colors. Also, I'm really regretting that white tile wall in the back. I should have changed it to something else. I don't like it. It just sticks out like a sore thumb and it bothers me. It's going for something kitcheny, but it just didn't really work here. Anyway, um, but yeah, you know, keep a very limited and cohesive color palette so that even if the styles of your pieces don't perfectly match or whatever, you can still create a really put together look that's going to look really polished and finished and, and awesome. All right, now we've got the entrance to the basement. You can see, as I said, I flipped it around and I switched the stairs to the wide ones with the railings so that you don't fall off the sides and end up out the back because there's no wall out there. And here is the main room of the basement. I really wanted to go for like a 60s, 70s rec room kind of vibe, you know, with the shag carpeting and the wood paneling and all of it. Just the whole look and I love it. It's it's really great. And bathroom. I'm so happy to have a clean shower now. Oh, it makes me so happy. I really, really wish I didn't have to have this ridiculously ornate mirror in here that doesn't go with anything else in the bathroom. Hint, hint, Bethesda, you could give us a better mirror, but we'll live for now. And here I made a little bedroom for Daphne because I love and adore her and she's precious and also is almost never here. For some reason, she disappears all the time. Um, but she is adorable and sweet and she breaks my heart and I just want to protect her and take care of her forever. So I built her a little comic book themed paradise and it's so cute. I love it. These sofas were really great. They were in the Atomic Shop recently. I think they still are for a couple more days or something. Yeah, I think for a few more days at the time of upload. I really liked them. I like them actually better than the red ones, which I also have. These ones have like a cool wooden end panel. And here's our workshop area, which is very basementy, like unfinished basement. But yeah, we got all our workbenches. I've also got a vending machine down here for my convenience so that I can stock it whenever I need to. I do get a lot of traffic through this camp. So yeah, my vending machines are very often busy. Ugh, I love the look of this room. It's so cool. And the last bit of the tour 
before we go is going to be the backyard. But first, close the doors because we were not raised in a barn. So yeah, out here I tried to really keep that mid-century theme going. And as you can see here, this is the stairs coming from below to attach to our ground floor level, and you really can hardly see them there. Yeah, I love, 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 love this, what is it, the dungeon floor? It's just got this really great, like, brick patio look to it. It's fantastic, and it's so perfect with something like this. This grill is distinctly lacking in Wanamingo plushies, and I'm really not sure why there's no plushie on the grill. If you don't know that about me yet, if I have a grill in my camp, I have put a Wanamingo plushie on it. It's just, I don't know, it's a thing that I do in all my camps now, and well, I forgot it here. So anyway, that's it really. Um, that's the complete thing. Hope you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed and you've turned on notifications. As always, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.